Shalom, and welcome to Christian's Hebrew Connection, the teaching ministry of Gary Huff and the Hebraic Christian community and Israel, a ministry devoted to restoring the biblical Hebraic heritage of the Christian faith. Today's program, here are your hosts, Gary and Darlene Huff. Shalom. Welcome to Christian's Hebrew Connection. I'm Darlene Huff. Thank you for joining our program this evening. Before learning about the Feast of the Lord, it would be helpful for us to consider the period of time using the biblical Hebrew calendar. The calendar that was used during the time of Jesus and the Apostles was much different from the one that most of the world uses today. The festivals are counted on the lunar calendar, not solar-based. God gave instructions concerning the Feast of Trumpets. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 23, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, and a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. God used trumpets as a means of communication with His covenant people. The sound of the trumpet represented God's voice. Have you ever heard one? There is no sound like it in the whole world. The type of trumpet blown was the ram's horn. Shofar is the Hebrew word for trumpet or ram's horn. There are three prophetic trumpets known. In the book of Genesis chapter 22 verse 13, The shofar was blown in remembrance of the ram that was sacrificed in the place of Isaac at Mount Moriah. Remember when Abraham raised his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. The Hebrews always blew trumpets on the first day of each month so that everyone would know that the new month had arrived along with the new moon. On the Feast of Trumpets, they blew them extra long and extra loud. The Hebrew word rosh means head or beginning. Ha means the. Shana means year. Rosh Hashanah. It marks our biblical new year. The sages believe the Feast of Trumpets to be the birthday of the world. After you watch this video today, it would be helpful to the ministry if you would do three things. Share it with everyone you know, hit the thumbs up or the like button, and subscribe to it. We invite you to join the conversation on Gary's Facebook page as well. Now let's join Gary and learn about the first of these three prophetic trumpets. Last week's teaching on the season of Teshuvah leading up to the Feast of Trumpets sparked many questions along with a lot of good, healthy dialogue on the subject. Much of the dialogue we had focused on the subject of the upcoming Feast of Trumpets. Now, the Feast of Trumpets, as many of you know, is one of the most hotly debated subjects, not only in Christianity, but in Judaism as well. Why? Because it's filled with so many diversities of thoughts and beliefs concerning all the what's and where's and when's within this biblical festival. Now, with all the different views concerning the Feast of Trumpets, I thought I'd just add one more into the mix if it's all right with you. Now, I'm doing this teaching tonight because I didn't hear this point made in any of our discussions this week. Or for that matter, I've never heard it in Christianity or Messianic circles. But with this piece of ancient teaching, it will make at least some of these controversial mysteries come to light. But let me say this. In no way is this teaching an exhaustive teaching. It's only the beginning layer of this subject. And let me also say this, that tonight's teaching is not in opposition to others' viewpoint on this subject, especially where every view needs to be taken serious and into consideration and then searched out. But tonight's teaching needs to be added to the discussion before we can make a conscious decision concerning some of the mysteries surrounding the Feast of Trumpets. So in the days of Jesus and before... The ancient sages of Israel taught that from the beginning of time, recorded in the book of Genesis chapter 1, 
until the end of time that there would be three special prophetic trumpets sounded. Let me say it again. Three special trumpets sounded. Doing what? Announcing three historical prophetic events that would forever change the human condition. Let me say it another way. Over all the course of time allotted to planet Earth, there will be three major prophetic trumpets that would usher in events that would forever change everything we know and understand about the creation. Now, each of the three trumpets was given a name. Now, once we learn their ancient names, we'll see tonight that the Apostle Paul used these ancient names while teaching even us Gentiles. Also, once we know their names, we'll see that our Savior, Yeshua Jesus, used them when speaking about the end of the age. Now, these three prophetic trumpets are the keys to unlocking at least a few of these mysteries. We'll begin tonight by studying the events of Genesis chapter 22, where God told Abraham to sacrifice his son, Isaac. But in the text, we see Abraham instructing his servants to wait at the foot of the mountain because he and Isaac was going up to worship and then, listen, both of them would be returning. Abraham believed that when he offered up his son Isaac, that somehow, some way, God would resurrect him. Therefore, it's believed that Isaac's resurrection took place, listen, on the Feast of Trumpets, thereby connecting the Feast of Trumpets, the sound of the trumpet, with the resurrection of the dead. Now the sages also taught that it's here at the binding of Isaac that two of our three prophetic trumpets can be found. The special trumpets are attached to the special realm that just seemingly just appeared from out of nowhere caught in the thicket by its two horns. But the question is, where did this special realm come from? Well, the sages taught that God created this special realm and its two special horns from the foundation of the world as a substitute sacrifice to die in Isaac's place. Now, if this concept sounds familiar, the book of Revelation tells us that our Savior, Jesus, our substitute sacrifice, was also prepared and slain from the foundation of the world. And according to the sages, so was this special realm with its two special horns prepared from the Genesis creation. Now, was Isaac really resurrected or was this just an old Jewish fable? Well, for the answer, turn to the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, chapter 11, verses 17 through 19, as we begin our search for these three prophetic trumpets tied to the Feast of Trumpets and the resurrection of the dead. So let's begin. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17 will answer the question to see if this resurrection of Isaac in Genesis 22 is just a fable or is it fact? In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17, it says this, By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. There it is. And he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it is said, In Isaac your, uh, your seed shall be called. That's important because before this event in Genesis 22, God told Abraham that through his seed, Isaac, all the nations of the earth would be blessed and his, and his inheritance would be greater than the sands of the sea or the stars in heaven. Now, if Abraham sacrificed him, how could God's promise be made true? That set up the rest of this. In Isaac, your seed shall be called. Verse 19, concluding here, Abraham concluding, since God cannot lie and he already promised that uh, uh, through Isaac, the world would be blessed, con concluding that God was able, here it is, to raise him up, that's a resurrection, even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. Amen and amen. Let's get right into the PowerPoint tonight and talk about the Feast of Trumpets. 
the Feast of Trumpets. Here we have the Feast of Trumpets begins a new beginning, Genesis 1, with a brand new creation. The Feast of Trumpets begins a new beginning, Genesis 1, with a new creation. God said, let it be. Everything in Genesis 1, when he created, let it be. And the rabbis believe that the creation happened on this feast, the Feast of Trumpets. Wow, what made them believe that? Here in the beginning, with the sound of the trumpet, God created a new heaven and new earth. Genesis chapter number one. Let's read that and we'll find out why the rabbis believe that the creation of the world happened at the creation that Rosh Hashanah or the Feast of Trumpets was in the beginning. Genesis 1 verse 1 says this, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Did this take place in the beginning? Did it take place on the Feast of Trumpets? Well, let's find out. In the beginning God's voice was like a trumpet. Now, in the future, the next two messages on this subject, in the next two weeks, we're going to find out that God's voice is the trumpet. So in the beginning, God's voice was like a trumpet, which called forth a new creation by saying, let it be. So at the sound of the trumpet, God said, let it be. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God said, let it be. And the rabbis believe that it is on the Feast of Trumpets. Therefore, the Feast of Trumpets is believed to be the birthday of the world. So let me be the first to say happy birthday to you. Why did they believe this? Well, the answer can be seen in the Hebrew text. Here it is. Verse number one, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, Hebrew goes from right to left and it includes the number one, which is the first word at the top right hand corner there is the word Aleph in Hebrew. What does uh, in the beginning God created the heavens and earth say in Hebrew? Aleph Bereshit bara Elohim et Hashemim vayet Haaretz. Now for you who are taking notes, I've transliterated it for you. Aleph Bereshit bara Elohim et Hashemim vayet Haaretz. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now what made them believe that this happened on the upcoming Feast of Trumpets? Well, in the text, is the clue for the season of the creation. Let's look at this part. First, what do we see? We see the number one. That is the word Aleph. In the beginning is the Hebrew word Bereshit. So you would say the first verse. In the beginning, you'd say Aleph Bereshit. Now the rabbis found from these same letters that this can be spelled. From the same letters in the beginning, can this be spelled? And what does it spell? Spells this, with the first of Tishrei, or in the first of Tishrei. Now, I'll tell you this, that Tishrei is a biblical month, so it's given us a timing when the beginning happened, where God said, let it be. In the text is the clue for the season of creation, Genesis 1. So in the beginning, Genesis 1 is tied to, as we see here in the text, the first of Tishrei. Now, when is Tishrei? Leviticus 23 gives us the answer. He says this, speak to the children of Israel saying in the seventh month. Now, the seventh month biblically is the month of Tishrei. So in the seventh month, Tishrei, when? On the first day of the month. So here we found the first of Tishrei from the beginning. Okay. What is supposed to happen on the first of Tishrei? You shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing trumpets. Now, that's the Feast of Trumpets right there in the beginning. It is a holy convocation. I hope you're getting excited. The sages say that God himself blew the first trumpet by saying, let it be. And in the creation, he created a special trumpet. Now, this is where we get to Genesis 22 from the creation. In the Mishnah, it says this. This is their commentary. On the sixth day, this is creation, in which God created all animals. On the sixth day, he created, look, a special realm. Why? For Abraham as a substitute sacrifice to die in place of his son Yitzhak or Isaac. They go on to say, for from the beginning, God had foreseen the binding of Isaac. Therefore, a special realm had been prepared from when? The creation or the foundation of the world. So this is a special realm. 
The binding of Isaac was during, as the, as the sages believe, Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the year or the Feast of Trumpets. Amen. So let's study this special realm that was prepared from the foundation. The special realm produced two prophetic trumpets, two of them. And I'm using uh, these, these trumpets because most people know or recognize these. Here they are. This comes from the animal kudu. This is where the Yemenite shofar or horn is taken from, not the ram, the shorter one. So I'm just using this as an illustration. Here's the two rams. With a special ram, you have two prophetic trumpets prepared from the foundation. But let me say this. There will also be a third trumpet throughout all time or human existence. Okay? We're only going to study one today. That's the reason why we need three messages to get all this teaching in. So someone may ask, so where's the third horn or trumpet? Well, don't worry, it's coming. By the last teaching on this three-part series, we'll see that third trumpet, but not tonight. We'll see it. There are three historic feasts with three prophetic trumpets. According to the rabbis in the Talmud, they say this. It says, the sages taught there will be three trumpets or calls of God throughout history and our name. Now, get out your papers and pens now and your uh, pencils. We're going to give you the ancient names that has an impact on the gospel teachings. The first one, rightly, is called the first trumpet. That's not hard to remember. Now, the second one is where the mysteries become evident. Now, the second one of the three is called the last trumpet. Now, evidently, it's not the last trumpet, but it's called the last trumpet. And the third one is the most important trumpet. It's called Shofar Haggadah, or the great trumpet. The first trumpet, the last trumpet, and the great trumpet. Now, the rabbis say when you look at each one of these as individuals, they are distinct and different from each, uh, uh, each other. They say that the first trumpet is associated with this festival, the betrothal of Israel and the Messiah during the giving of the Torah on Sinai at the very first Pentecost. Some of you didn't know that, but the first Pentecost celebration was at Mount Sinai of giving of the Torah or the Word of God. They believed that this first historical prophetic trumpet will, that would change the whole human existence would come, it would come from Mount Sinai. And it did definitely change the world. This is the first prophetic trumpet. Let's study a little bit about this one. The first prophetic trumpet was at Mount Sinai. Did that change things? It became the moral uh, level for all human existence of what God said on Mount Sinai. At the sound of the trumpet, we'll read. This first prophetic trumpet, what happened? The Bible says that God descended in the cloud and then he called Moses up. Let's see if we got this now. At the sound of the trumpet, God descended on a cloud or in a cloud and said to Moses, come up here or Aliyah. That was this first prophetic trumpet. It comes from this text, Exodus 19. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke. Why was the mountain covered with smoke? Because the Lord did what? Descending on it in fire. Details. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace and the mountain trembled. It shook. The text goes on. And the sound of the trumpet, there's that first prophetic trumpet, and the sound of this trumpet grew louder and louder and it spoke. Then God spoke, or then Moses spoke, and the voice of God answered him. So at the sound of the trumpet, the Lord came down or descended upon Mount Sinai in a cloud. What happened then? Then the Lord called Moses up Sinai, saying, Aliyah, or come up here. How about that? There's Mount Sinai. So at the sound of the trumpet, the Lord descended in a cloud. So at the sound of the trumpet, what happened? God descended, according to the text, in a cloud. And Moses ascended up in a cloud. Let's see if we got this straight now. Let's see. At the sound of the trumpet on Mount Sinai, the Lord descended in a cloud at the sound of the trumpet and called Moses up. Wow. This is what the rabbi said about this event. In the Midrash, it says, Rav Nachman said, 
what has been, that's back at Mount Sinai, will be again. So what was is what will be in the future. Just as the Holy One, blessed be He, lifted Israel from Egypt on the clouds of glory and carried them as it's written in Exodus 19, 4, it's what it says, I bore you, God says, on eagles' wings. So will he do for them again, looking back to see what's coming in the future. As it says in Isaiah, who are these who fly like the cloud? I hope you're getting something out of this tonight. So the first trumpet prepares us to recognize the second. Let me say it again. The first trumpet at Mount Sinai, this prophetic trumpet, and the events that, that took place after the trumpet sounding, it will prepare us as an example to recognize that second prophetic trumpet. Hallelujah. Looking back to see what's coming. The sages say there are three trumpets to be sounded or shofars calls of God. The first one, what is it? We found that the first trumpet was at Mount Sinai. <clears throat> Let's look at the second one. What is the second one? The second trumpet, which is called the last trumpet, the rabbis believe, and I'll show you the reason why they believe that, will be at the resurrection of the dead. Wow, let's look at this trumpet. It's called the last trumpet. The rabbis said this. This teaching was around in the first century. The last trumpet, now that's the second prophetic trumpet, is associated with the wedding of Israel and the Messiah when? at the Feast of Trumpets that many calls Rosh Hashanah. Okay, let me read that again. Now this last trumpet, which is the second one, is associated with the wedding of Israel and Messiah on the Feast of Trumpet, Rosh Hashanah. What does it do, this second one? It announces the coming of Messiah where the dead are resurrected and the faithful are changed. They will be resurrected and changed to immortality. This is at the last trump. So the dead resurrects and is changed. When? At the last trump. The rabbis have been teaching this for centuries, but there's a first century rabbi that all of us knows that taught this same Talmudic teaching to a bunch of Gentiles. Who was it? His name is Rav Shaul, or the Apostle Paul taught this same Talmudic message to us. Look what he says in 1 Corinthians 15. Behold, Paul says, I'm going to tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. There's the same terminology. When? In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. When? Here Paul is using this ancient teaching of the three prophetic trumpets. He's talking about where the resurrection takes place at the last or the second trumpet. He's using the same teaching. Listen to what he says. For the trumpet, that's that second prophetic trumpet called the last trump, will sound in the future. And the dead will be raised. How incorruptible. And we shall be changed. That's almost word for word what the rabbis have been teaching the Jewish people for centuries. Here Paul is quoting from a Talmudic teaching. The last trump is the Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpet, trumpet. Look what the sages, Paul's just quoting from an ancient teaching here that we're learning tonight. One of the reasons for blowing the shofar, the trumpet, is to proclaim the resurrection of the dead. You see how it's tied to the resurrection of the dead. The 13th principle of Israel's faith is the belief in the resurrection of the dead. I believe and I'm counting on the resurrection of the dead. Why? Because Jesus did it first. He is the first fruits of those who have slept. And if he's not resurrected, we're all yet in our sin. But Jesus absolutely resurrected from the dead. And because he lives, we're going to live also. The 13th principle of Israel's faith is the belief in the resurrection of the dead. The resurrection of the dead will take place, according to the sages, on Rosh Hashanah or the Feast of Trumpets. So the resurrection of Isaac on Mount Moriah is celebrated, and it is the traditional reading for Rosh Hashanah or the Feast of Trumpets. Genesis 22, they believe that these two trumpets signified a resurrection on Rosh Hashanah. Here it says in Hebrews 11 in our text, Abraham concluded that God was able to raise him or resurrect Isaac up 
even from the dead. They believe that happened on the upcoming Feast of Trumpets. So the resurrection of Isaac is the first and the last. How is it tied to the first and the last trumpet? How is it? Well, let's let the rabbis tell us uh, in the first century. The shofar was blown at Mount Sinai when the Torah was given. See, that's the first prophetic one. It came from the realm which had been sacrificed in place of Isaac Yetchak on Mount Moriah or Moriah. Here we have Abraham. And here he has this, this realm that was uh, uh, created for this very point in the future to take the place uh, or take the place of Isaac. Here the rabbis say that the left horn was blown or blown for the shofar at Mount Sinai. That's what we saw where it waxed louder and louder and louder. This is the first trumpet. This will set us up for next week's teaching. They go on to say then its right horn or the second horn called the last trumpet will be blown to herald the resurrection and the coming of Messiah. You see this special ram that had two special horns created from the foundation of the world to announce the, the resurrection of the dead. So the special realm produced two prophetic trumpets tonight before we come to an end. There it is, this special realm that, that was created from the foundation of the world to take the place of Isaac in the future. Two horns, two prophetic uh, uh, trumpets. Uh, that's, one has been sounded, one is going to be sounded, and there will be a third trumpet we're going to be talking about throughout time. That's yet to be sounded. We might ask the question, so where is this third trumpet? Well, we'll find the answer to that, that third prophetic trumpet next week on Christian's Hebrew uh, connection. But this might give you a hint of where it comes from. I hope you've enjoyed this tonight. We're just about out of time. Let me say this. Be sure, if you enjoyed this, be sure to share it like it, and subscribe to it. With that, I'm Gary Huff, and let me bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you and hear the sound of the trumpet in this season. Shalom. Thank you for watching Christian's Hebrew Connection with Gary Huff. We would like to thank our sponsors who make this program possible, the partners of the Hebraic Global Community. And once again, Thank you for watching Christian's Hebrew Connection with Gary Hubbard.